YouTube! Welcome back to my channel, So Fast I Am. So today we're going to do another installment of what's in my sewing kit. Um, I'm going to try and keep this a short video, but I'm going to talk about a lot of random tools that I own and I like in my sewing life. So um, we're going to start over here. We're going to talk about a surgical clamp. Uh, so this is just a basic surgical clamp. You can get these like online, different places or whatnot, or in possibly local surgical stores. Um, I like these. Um, I really want to get a longer pair. They're really useful actually for like turning tubes and stuff or pulling things like through. I'm trying to get to like a corner and pulling something out because um, you can like slide it in there and kind of grab onto something and then pull it through. So that's kind of what I use them for. I don't use them often, but they're kind of a nifty and weird thing to have. Um, this is one of my favorite things. This is my burl nipper from Ginger. I don't know if I've talked about this before or not. I might have, but I'm going to talk about it again because it's amazing. Ginger doesn't make these anymore. There is a place where you can get them. I will put a link um, in the description box of where I have also been able to find them nowadays. Um, although I haven't actually purchased from the company, but I plan to because I really want another one. I accidentally dropped this on a hard floor and the tip is bent. Um, what I like about this, okay, so this does several things. One, it has this lovely little pointy end that you can make holes with, or you can help use, um, like, to guide through a machine. You can help, you can use it to pick things out. This end is really nice because um, it is actually cutting. Like, if you push hard enough, it will cut uh, and cut off little burrs and stuff. But it also is really great, like, if you're seam ripping something and you have a bunch of little threads, you can sit there and, like, use this like a tweezer and pull them out. Um, I love this thing. It's super handy. It lives near my sewing machine. I use it a lot to help guide stuff in to the machine um, or to pull things out uh, when I'm unpicking stuff. So it's used in rug construction from what I understand. Like that's the original uh, use of them. It's a burling nipper. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty handy dandy tool. Um, in my sewing room, you will find an array of screwdrivers of different types and sizes. These are just a few. I have a whole bunch more. I have a bunch, I like about a whole set of these that are come in different sizes and also have a bunch of different sizes of, uh, Phillips head. These are all flathead. This is the one that like came with my sewing machine or my serger or both. I, uh, I don't know. It, same manufacturer, same rough time of manufacturer. So... I have multiples of these. Um, and then this is just a long one that I probably inherited from my father, I'm sure. Um, but I like to have a lot of screwdrivers around to fix my machines, basically. Take things apart if I need to. Um, it's really important to me to do my own, a certain amount of my own maintenance. Um, like taking off the faceplate, dusting all of that. So it's always good to have these things. Uh, these are also really great. Like this one's small enough to do um, uh, the loosen and tighten the screws basically on uh, the needle. Needles, yeah. Okay, so here we've got, I'm gonna talk about some point turners. Um, so I have two different types here. This one's a bamboo one. It's pretty nice. Uh, this one's great because it doesn't get affected by heat. Um, it's nice and strong, whereas this one's plastic, it can melt. Um, I love both of them. They both have different uses. Like I said, this one doesn't uh, have issues with heat. This one's nice because it has um, measurements. And then it also has right here and here, these are for shanking buttons. So, um, although I have my own way that I shank buttons where I don't necessarily need them, but occasionally I'll use this to help me shank a button. Um, and it's got two different widths. So Excuse me. This one is a bit uh, thicker if you want a higher shank, and this one's a bit thinner. Um, okay, so let's go here next. This one isn't something that you need necessarily, but I really love it. This is a pattern notcher. Um, I also somewhere have a pattern, like a hole punch that I can punch like anywhere in paper, which is really useful. Um, but uh, I love having a pattern notcher because I, it, it, when I am copying patterns, making my own patterns, whatever. I like to be able to put the notches in it and have a nice little cutout. Um, it just makes a, let me grab a scrap of paper. 
perhaps eh, we'll just use a little bit of this paper. This isn't super duper important. Just right here, it go in, and it makes a little notch. So then on the end, when you're tracing, you can literally just take your marker and mark your notch uh, in your seam allowance, but it doesn't go too far in. It's kind of nice. I love it. Um, so that if you're if you are gonna do a lot of patterning, these are really cheap to get your hands on. I think I got this on eBay for like eight bucks or something, or maybe Amazon for eight dollars. I don't know. Wasn't a bad deal at all. Um, definitely, you need a good pair of tweezers in your life, um, especially long ones that have like little needles. These are specifically like for my serger, but they're good for a whole bunch of other things. I'll use them for a lot of stuff, but uh, I believe they came with my serger. Most sergers do come with a pair of tweezers because you almost always need them for uh, threading it. I highly recommend keeping nail file around. Um, like this is a cheap junk one. Some of these, they're good for all sorts of random things. Um, just... Or, you know, you can have a metal one. Um, I have a bunch of these, so I usually keep one that I have that's just for sewing, for filing plastics, or little bits of metal or whatnot. Um, let's see. Here we go. Here we have pliers and whatnot. I love having a variety of pliers and nips and whatnot. Um, these are the main ones that I have right now. Um, I like this one because it's good for like jewelry work or little things uh, when I'm dealing with chains or stuff. So that's kind of nice to have uh, when you're doing costuming too. Uh, a pair of nice needle nose pliers, um, whether you're, whether you need it for machines or work with costumes. Um, and then a pair of nipper pliers, um, wire nippers or whatever. Um, I use these a lot when I'm deal dealing with the zippers. So whether I'm trying to take off teeth or squeeze on um, zipper stops or whatnot, yeah, these are my go-tos for that. Um, magnifying glass is also kind of useful to have sometimes when you're really trying to do fine detailed work or if you're working on something and you really need to make sure that you um, don't accidentally, if you're trying to unpick something and you make sure you don't accidentally get the fabric just the thread. I don't know. It's useful to have around. I don't use it very often, but I do love it. Um, ooh, this is one of my favorite things that I purchased. Um, do not use this on gingers. I only use this on my Fiskars and my cheap scissors, but these things do work um, on, on your like basic Fiskars and whatnot. You can run your scissors through them, um, all different sizes, and they do actually help sharpen and make them last longer. Again, don't use your gingers because the gingers are micro serrated and you want to get those professionally sharpened. This is only for cheap scissors, but worthwhile. And again, not very expensive. They also make like a little, which I have one somewhere. They make like this little coin one too. That's really nice. That's like just, oh, you know, like it's like this big and you hold it in your hand. Either one it works well. I just ended up getting the bigger one because I misplaced the little one and I have like three or four pairs of old Fiskars that I keep sharpened with this so that I can still use them because they have the spring action. Um, because I broke my thumb and I like the spring action. Okay, let's talk about thimbles because thimbles are super important. Um, if you are not hand sewing with a thimble, then I'm afraid I really do have to judge you and tell you that you need to learn how to use a thimble. Um, like, the amount of hand sewing that I've done over the years, the thimble has saved my finger so many times. There's a lot of different options for thimbles nowadays, and you can find something that will work for you. It is kind of, you do have to learn to sew a little differently, but these are absolutely worth it. You can use them to push, you know, your needle through, they help, like, they just really help save your finger from getting needles underneath the nail or embedded in deep inside. I've had needles go like, I've had the back end of needles go deep into my finger. And after that, I just figured out how to use a thimble. 
um, I use mine on this finger when I'm sewing. Uh, I do most of my sewing with these two hands and then I push with this one, or with these two fingers, and push with this one. Um, that's how I use my thimble. There's a couple of different ways, a couple of, you know, they make ones nowadays, if you have longer nails, they make ones that are like a half a thimble that your nail can stick out the top of. Um, actually this one right here I think has an opening at the top that if I had a long nail it would come through. And this has like a little metal disc inside of this piece of leather here. Um, these ones are more decorative. Um, they're probably from my grandma's sewing kit or a sewing kit from a friend that I inherited or both. Um, yeah. But finding, and it, it's also important to find the right size thimble. Like this style, style, they have different sizes. So this one is... Oh. Uh, I don't know. Let's see if we'll be able to see it. Uh, do you want to focus? You don't want to focus. All right. It says it's an eight on the side. They are measured in millimeters. And then that's also converted to like a number chart that means something. Um... But you can look it up, and it all has to do with the size of your finger. So I prefer an 8, I know that. Um, but really, like, learning to use a thimble is so, 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 so useful as a sewer. Okay. Um, ooh, let's talk about pattern weights. Alright, I... So I bought some of these pattern weights, like these you can get out of Joann's in like a four pack and they're really expensive and they work but they get in your way a lot I started using these and I love them these are literally just super cheap uh, nickel washers from the hardware store I bought a bunch of them to try to make whoops I bought a bunch of them to try to make a belt out of this like recycled item book that I found at some point and then I realized how heavy said belt was when you add like 20 of these to go around my size hips and then I was like nah never mind so originally I was gonna like sew them together and make like stacked uh fabric weights like this but I realized no they work great like this they also have a low profile so stuff doesn't like they don't get knocked as much uh, they're really easy to slide out of the way if you need to put a ruler down next to it. Um, I, I actually super recommend just getting some cheap big washers for pattern weights instead of spending money on things like this or other like silly, silly but cute pattern weights. And I mean like cute pattern weights are nice, but it's also nice to just have something cheap and functional. So don't feel bad if you just want a cheap functional pattern weight and you buy washers. And I mean, I have like a dozen, I have dozens of these laying around and I just use them for that or for other things. They hold down fabric. It's really nice because you can buy a lot of them. Like this is a four pack for, I don't even remember how much it is, but it's a lot. And when you're doing large patterns, like being able to lay and spread out, a lot of them is really nice. So... Um, oh, okay. So, last little thing that I'm going to talk about is punches and uh, setters. So, this is a leather punch. It's mostly used for leather. You can use it for some thick fabrics. I don't often punch holes in thick fabrics with this. My preference when I'm trying to put a hole through fabric is, when at all possible, to use an awl um, and make the hole as big as possible by spreading the fibers rather than actually punching a hole through them. If you spread the fibers, then you have less um, broken ends, uh, whereas this, you know, gives you a lot of cut ends and then you have to deal with it possibly fraying, even when you're putting your grommet around it. I've had stuff pull out. So, um, but yeah, this I usually, I definitely keep one of these around. These are really great. I mean, I'll use this, I'll buy a belt and if I need an extra, an extra hole or something, I can use that to put that in or like I said, different fabrics. Um, I bought it when I first started making corsets and then I learned that it's better to try to spread the fabric with an awl versus punching a hole in it. Um, so I don't use it too often anymore, but it is a cool tool and it's got all of these different size holes. So you just 
rotate, wait, I just want to go the right way. Yeah, you just rotate this to get different sized holes. So, um, then here I have two other different pliers. This is a, this is an old style Dritz, uh, grommet setter. It sets grommets and snaps, I think, if I remember right. Um, I've had this one for forever. I'm really, like, I really like this new style that they have recently put, put out. Um, it's like this, and it has all of these little different um, parts that you can put in it, but I'm going to complain right now because, okay, so this one I bought, I think is the snap and eyelet setter. I'm trying to remember. It might be the eyelet setter. Um, and that's great. Um, they've made it so that these parts are all interchangeable. Like, so they, they sell, they sell like an eyelet one and they sell like a heavy duty eyelet one and they sell a snap one and um something else anyways uh to get the tips to get the like dies you have to buy a handle every time which annoys me i'm like i want to buy one handle and then i just want to be able to buy the sets of these um for the different types because they literally will fit all the only difference between the handles is they changed the color of the uh of the grip and I mean, yeah, I guess it would be nice to maybe have two, but I don't need four different handles in order to have all of the different sets of tips. Um, but one of the main reasons why I bought this is because if you go to, uh, there's a couple places online, Farthingales is one of them, they sell a boning die tip. Um, this, this is a boning tip setter. Um, and it fits it they, on the website it's they say it's for the prim brand but prim is the non-american version like name for dritz it's just like sage and breville are the same brand um prim and dritz are the exact same brand just in different countries um so this will fit this and i can put bone tips on with it which is nice um, but yeah, so it just kind of annoys me that you can't get the tips for the snaps or the other ones separately from a, a whole nother set of pliers, which means if I want more, I have to spend another 15 to $20, I forget exactly what it was, to get another handle and get all the tips. When I could just buy more tips, like, it'd be really nice. So if anyone from Dritz is listening, you should literally just put these out, this part out as a set instead of making us waste all of our money on your stuff. But I know you, and I know how you don't like to do that, so, because you haven't liked to do that for years, so, you know, I don't expect you to actually listen to my suggestion. Um, yeah. Now I've rambled about sewing tools and given my little rant about these new Dritz pliers, which are really nice. I really like, I, I much prefer the feel and handle of this. I feel like it gets better pressure than this one did. Um, like it's, it, it, to me, it seems more even, I don't know, it might be my imagination, but, um, but yeah. Um, so if anybody has any questions or comments or wants to know more about any of these tools or other tools I might use in my sewing life please feel free to leave a comment below and I will try to answer you. Um, as always, you know, like, subscribe, follow me, come seek me out on other forms of social media. I have, you know, um, an Instagram and a Tumblr where I mostly reblog a lot of stuff, but then I'll occasionally post uh, other interesting things. Um, or stuff that I'm doing, or like sneak peeks of upcoming upcoming projects and whatnot. And yeah, um, I hope this video was informative to some, and maybe you learned about some cool tools that you didn't know existed, or have some thoughts about what you might want to add to your sewing collection. So, hope everyone's having a good week, and love you. Bye.